I would literally die to be the father and the husband and the leader and the team leader I want to be. That why is so ingrained in my heart that nothing can stop me. Now, what is your why? You gotta go through this process. We must attach an emotion to our goals or they won't become a reality. So the emotion behind it is your why. Why do you want it? It's called the seven levels deep. I learned it from a gentleman named Joe Stump. Changed my life 13 years ago, forever. I'll never be the same because of what that man taught me. But it really helps us uncover the emotion behind us wanting to go to another level. You have a why. Why do you want to go from where you are to where you want to be? There's a gap, you want to get there. There's a gap in your relationship, in your health, in your love, in your passion, in your intimacy, in your income, in what you do for a living, your career, the business you started, you're here, there's a gap. But why do you want to do it? So I want to go through this. I'm going to go through it kind of quick. It's a process that you will do once a year for the rest of your life and you'll do it with those that you love. I do it with my family, I do it myself. This is not a one and done. This is a forever thing. But when I say why or what's your purpose, you know, that's, that's kind of a, it's been, it's been done forever we say that. But how do you really dig into it? So I want to tell you the story um, with Joe Stump. He came to my house. I hired him as a consultant to help me in my business. I wanted my students to get even more results. He said, have you ever done the seven levels deep? I said, I don't know what it is. He said, let's do it. I said, just tell me. I'll give it to my students. He goes, no, I want to go through it with you. It's like, okay. So he was $10,000 for a day as a consultant, which was a lot of money, especially back then, 15 years ago. When he gets there, just like I said, why are you here? Who would say you're here because you'd like to make more money? Raise your hand if you'd like to make more money or make more impact on the world. Raise your hand if you'd like to have your relationship on another level, your health on another level, right? That's a why. I'm here because I want my health to be better. I'm here because I'm sick of procrastinating. I'm here because I want to launch my business. I'm here because I want to reach my goals. He said to me, why did you give me 10 grand to be a consultant here? And I remember saying something like, I want to impact more lives. He said, great. So he writes down, I asked you why we're here, and you said you want to impact more lives. Why do you want to impact more lives? Oh, you know, uh, I want to raise the standards of this industry, I remember saying, to a whole other level. He said, oh, that's a good one. I asked you why you paid me. You want your students to get more results and you want to raise the standards of this industry. Great. Why do you want to raise the standards of this industry? I remember saying something like, I want to leave a legacy for my kids and expand my business. I don't even know what the next couple were. I was kind of in my head, which most of you are. When I say, why are you here? If the first answer of why you're here, it's usually not the true why. And I want to tell you, this is how I felt it. When I first got asked, it was like in my head, and then all of a sudden, he got to the fifth time he asked me, oof, everything changed. It went from my, it was like, I felt this physical, this physi physiology, I felt my physiology change, like, I felt it go from my head to go boom, and landed in my heart. And he said to me, why, why, uh, whatever my fourth answer was, he said, why, and I remember I said something I had never said before. I said, I never want to go backwards. Now, I don't know. Um, I don't know where that came from because it had never come out of my mouth before. But when I said that, I felt an emotion that you couldn't believe. And all of a sudden, these things started flooding into my life. I didn't like my mom working three jobs and coming home at nine o'clock at night. Me and my sister were lat lat latch key kids. We'd come home and do our homework do the, do the uh, laundry and probably make dinner, my sister more than me, but make dinner for my mom, right? I, I didn't want to go back there. I, want, I remember my mom struggling for money. I remember when we got evicted from our trailer because my mom couldn't afford it anymore. I remember my mom and dad, they split when I was three, but they would still fight over money because my dad didn't give enough and all that kind of stuff. I just had all these things flooding into me like, I don't want to go back there. I remember wishing to go to fancy restaurants, wishing we could go on a real vacation. Man, my life is amazing and I have choices. I am not going backwards. I remember this feeling and I remember getting emotional. It's like, I'm not going backwards. I thought I was done and then he looked at me and said, and I want you to really think, as I'm asking you this, I want you to think through for you. Again, if you're, you have accelerated successful and we go through this process, you have the forms, you have everything, but this will give you a good teaser of it, right? 
when he said, well, why don't you want to go backwards? Now I'm in my heart. I got tears well, you know, filling up in my eyes and I said something I had never said up to that time. I said, I want my kids to have choices. Now, for those of you who have parents, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not talking about raising two entitled brats or three now. The world doesn't need any more entitled children. Can we all agree on that? That's a fact. But I felt as a kid I didn't have choices and I wanted them to have choices. Now I'm completely emotional. I'm sitting around with his team and my team. I remember where I was sitting outside at this big old table. I literally had tears coming down my face and I just remember thinking, I want my kids to be able to do what they want and like impact the world. Not be lazy, not be entitled, but I want them to have choices. And I remember thinking, that's it. But it wasn't the six levels deep. It was the seven levels deep. And he said, Dean, I asked you, and he repeated all the things I said, and he said, you don't want to go backwards. You want your kids to have choices. Dean, why do you want your kids to have choices? And I remember I said my why for the first time in my life. It still stick with me. It was, it's 14 years ago. And I still do this exercise every single year. I said I want to be in control of my life. Now, I don't mean a control freak, and everybody's got their own why. This is my why. What my control, what came flooding back into my soul and my body at that moment is that I was out of control. I moved 20 times by the time I was 19. I had stepbrothers, stepsisters, stepparents, stepmom, stepdad. I had step grandparents that were so amazing. Leo and Martha Rizzo. They took me hunting and fishing and cooked for me. They were part of my life for like five years, but then I was out of control. I had to move, move in with dad, move in with grandma, move to a different school. I was so out of control as a kid. I had no decision making. Not that maybe kids shouldn't. This is what landed for me. I decided in that moment that no one is gonna tell me what I can do with my time, how I raise my children. I wear a gray t-shirt every day of my life. Why? Because I'm in control of that decision. I live where I want, I go on vacation when I want, and no one tells me I can't, listen, every day my children are with me. I can't today because I'm with you, but when my kids are with me, every day I pick them up from school. Every day my kids are with me, it's exactly half. I get them a week, they go with their mom for a week. When they're with me, I drive my kids to school every single day. I still make my kids lunches every single morning and still put a little note, even though they're getting so old, they're kind of fed up with it. I do it every day. I take them to school, I drive them to school. I take my kids to every practice. My son plays baseball, my daughter plays softball. Why? Because that car time is priceless. There's no electronics. I learn about their friends. I learn about who they like, what they're doing. I learn about school. I learn about their teachers. No one is ever gonna tell me, sorry, we're in the middle of something. You can't go pick up your daughter today. Screw that. I will chew through a brick wall. I will melt steel. There is no one gonna take that control away from me. I live the way I want, I dress the way I want, I raise my children the way I want, I date my wife the way I want, and no one's gonna take, and it, that, is, that is so powerful for me that I would die for that. I would literally die to be the father and the husband and the leader and the team leader I want to be. That why is so ingrained in my heart that nothing can stop me. Now, what is your why? You gotta go through this process. I don't know if it affected you today. It might not be in your heart right now. But I wanna tell you, this is the biggest game changer. I used to do this exercise on, on stage for about five years straight. Every month, we had a big old event in Las Vegas. I would fly down there and I would pick people to come on stage. But this gentleman comes up on stage, cool, good looking dude, probably like six foot five, dreadlocks, just like, just so cool, so good looking. Guy comes up on stage, I call him up, and I used to call someone up every, every month, and I'd go through this process with them live. So I call him up, and uh, he raises his hand, I'm like, come on up, there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of people in the audience, and I sit him down, and I said, let's get to your why. He's like, ah, you called on me, Dean. I already know my why. I'm like, oh crap, because the transformation is usually huge. People get to see the transformation through someone else. And I'm like, damn, he's like, I already know my why. I'm like, all right, so why are you here? He's like, because I, I need to make more money. I know I need to get my head straight. I need to make more money because in my neighborhood where I grew up as a kid, he said, there's not enough dads. There's hardly any dads. I didn't have a dad, and it's still the same way in that neighborhood. So I built this this charitable arm where he had dads, how cool is this? Dads going into this like program on weekends and like adopting a kid for just hours at a time. Like, like big brother probably, but his own thing. And he was doing this community, it was so beautiful guys. So beautiful. And he was smiling, he's like, I know my why. And that's a good one, right? That's a good one. And I said, well, I'm gonna just keep going. I, I, there's gotta be something deeper. It's gotta be something deeper for those tough days. When things go sideways and they're gonna, you need a why so strong that it, when people say they need a time management program, you don't need time management. You need a stronger why. Hear me on that. 
You don't need time management. You don't need to be younger. You don't need to be older. You don't need tech to be easier. You need a strong enough why that gets you a- get your ass out of the seat and you take the uncomfortable action and you boldly move forward even though you're scared to death. And your why will do that. Hear me on that. When I have a tough day, I don't say, I want to make another million bucks. I go, my kids deserve choices. I am not going backwards and no one's going to control my life. (laughs) Boom. I do the things even if I don't want to. So this guy comes up on stage. Awesome. He tells me that. I ask him why. I ask him why. I don't know if it was the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. I get to a moment and I realize that got him. He didn't have his why figured out. He thought he did. I said, why do you want, and whatever he said, I said, why do you want to do that? And I watched him go from this to this. And, he's, and all of a sudden, tears start coming down his face. And I was so happy that he would be so open. And he said, wow, you got me, Dean. He said, when my mom was alive, I was a drug addict. She raised me as a single mom with nothing. She taught me better than that. She got me to go to college. She did all these things for me. She sacrificed her life for me. And at the time she died, I was doing drugs. And she said, he said, the moment she passed away, I have not done a drug since. And I'm going to make my mom proud in heaven. And I say that to this day. I get emotional thinking about it because I felt his emotion. And I felt that why. And I'm not trying to make people cry. I'm trying to get you so in your heart. For him, he's going to face hard days. People are going to tell him he's crazy. He's going to have feel like an imposter on the inside. And those are the days you need to pull this emotion. If he says, well, I just want to create this charity. Well, the grant didn't come through. I don't think I can. When he looks up to the sky and says, I'm going to make that woman proud, do you think, a, you think someone who turns down his loan is going to stop him or someone saying you can't meet at this hall is going to stop him. Nothing will stop him. When I look at my children and say I'm going to do what I want when I want to do it with them, do you think anything could get in my way? A bulldozer couldn't stop me. So go back to the whiteboard. If we know where we are and then we know where we want to go, if we do the emotion of why then nothing can stop us. When I said this before, I really want you to hear me. When I said this before, about a strong enough why can make you unstoppable, I meant it. When I said you don't need a time management program, you don't need an anti-procrastination program, you don't need to be younger, you don't need to be older, you don't need to do less tech, you need a why so strong that your resourcefulness, here are these words, Your why is so strong that your resourcefulness is a 10 out of 10. Because when you have a strong enough desire, you could figure out anything. Is that true? So if you know where you are and where you want to go and then you attach an emotion to it, damn, we're almost there. We're almost there. 